This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Lately, I've been exploring the island of Solstheim in an attempt to redo a video on this channel that we're just not going to talk about. However, this is taking a really long time, and if you have been on the streams or followed the second channel, you should subscribe to the second channel, you'd understand a bit more why it's taking so long. I have no clue when it's going to end. Thankfully, less than a week ago, good friend of the channel and amazing Skyrim modder DDM Link dropped a brand new mod into my inbox that we've been talking about for months. Imagine you played Skyrim as an interdimensional, locationally confused nomad teleporting throughout the world to various places with little ability to know where you're going. This is the venerable Sir Travelington, who's been sent here today to guide you through your first foray into the unlimited possibilities of the Skyrim World Randomizer. I wasn't expecting much out of this mod at first, but as I hope to show you throughout this video, I think it may develop into one of the most exciting ways to play Skyrim that there is. Your new life as an agent of permanent teleportation starts like any other. Take a taxi, dodge a dragon, and lose the handcuffs. Expert difficulty because it's the best, and survival mode for that added scramble of desperation. The way this challenge works is you'll type in a seed, start the mod, and wait a few minutes while invisible elves of randomization work in the background to change the target location of every single door in the game. Let's say you use seed 000000. Your friend can do the same, and you can coordinate routes together as you'll be playing the same game. Piecing routes together and trying to remember the jumps you've made is a ton of fun, but because I was the first person in the world to test this mod out, I wanted to throw as many variables as I could at it early on to get a sense of its features and how it plays. For that reason, the first two days of Sir Travelington's adventure will be permadeath, a fresh save and a new seed each time he dies. Once you're educated on the basics, I want to help you out when it comes to tracking down your first quest in the Endless Maze and hopefully encourage some of you to give this mod a try. Where to does the mysterious rock take us? Where are we? Oh, I'm in, oh, I'm in a bandit camp. Hey, how you doing, guys? Wait, wait, all right, all right. Relax, I just got here. Hold on, I just started my adventure. Cut it out. I almost lost the fight. This is what's known as the open world teleport. A staple of this playthrough, the open world teleport will give you access to the game's, well, open world. But more importantly, the freedom to plan out your next move. Any outdoor vendors nearby? Maybe a camp to sleep or cook at? This is on survival mode. Or just take a breather if you end up in one of the safer portions of the map. I suggest on your first attempt to just find the nearest door so you can keep getting used to this whole teleportation thing. Whiterun Stables. Might as well go in. Need something? You picked a bad wait, time. Wait, wait, wait. Am I on private property? I think this... Okay, that person can probably kill me in one hit. This is all just a misunderstanding. You don't understand how I got here, sir. Stop. Ooh, okay, that's a lot of damage for one hit. I'm going back. I'm going back home. No, stop. All right, important rule of survival. Cut your losses when you know you're about to lose. Okay, easy kill. He just has cool armor. He's not tough at all. Is that why they're attacking me because of trespassing? This is a harsh response to trespassing. Now, is the front door different or will the front door just take us back? Okay, all right, Dwemer facility. Ah, the dungeon teleport. You're probably gonna see this one more than most. It's the most profitable teleport, but also the most dangerous. Okay, so the map just tells me I'm in Blackbriar Lodge. That's most definitely not where I'm at. So I'm getting a bad reading. All right, relax, this is it. You guys, it's done, it's done. The event is canceled. Shut up, let me live. I'm taking your camp. Oh, the Holy Grail. We found a bedroll. First big victory of this run. You've got a bed so long as you remember what got you there. They got booze. They don't have food though. Can I just eat their corpses? I feel like that would speed up the process. I'm a cat, right? This is not the way I came. It, uh, it put me somewhere totally different. Wait, did we break the loop? Shit, <laughs> st we're stuck out here. It switched up on me, I wasn't ready for that. Editor's note, but uh, no, it didn't switch up on me at all. I'm just an idiot and didn't recognize that this building has three doors and the one we came in from is this one in this picture. But the point I make here is still kind of important because doors will break using this mod. If a door does break though, it's gonna force you to adapt and employ a heightened sense of survivability. Okay, so can I do it like Indiana Jones? You just like, replaces it with something else. All right, bad run. You've accidentally turned Sir Travelington into Sir Wellington, but a few important discoveries already. You can find beds, you can find the open world, doors might break, and Indiana Jones is not a blueprint for success. Let's keep digging to see what we can find after I fulfill today's contractual obligation for Hello Fresh.
HelloFresh will send meals to your doorstep that you and your family can cook with easy to follow instructions so that you can cut out those time wasters in your life like googling ingredients, uh, you know, driving to the store, getting your parking spot stolen, you know, the usual. I do meal delivery personally because I have a packed schedule and HelloFresh has me covered with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items all delivered to my door. I've been trying to shed some weight recently, which if you've ever seen my first video on the channel, you know I need to, and HelloFresh fit and wholesome recipes make it easy to confidently cook healthier meals that don't taste like my usual ground chicken and rice. I love being able to customize my meals using Hello Custom by swapping out proteins or sides. It's never been easier to eat your way. If you'd like to support the channel, you can use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGJUVE, D-E-C-70, for 70% off plus free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Anyway, um, <laughs> where were we? To... Stand back. Interrupting an execution is a serious crime. Uh, no, that's ridiculous. The Hub Teleport. If you find yourself landing in one of Skyrim's major cities, then you're in luck. Not only do most have a vendor or two outdoors that you can trade with, they have an insane number of doors so exploration is easy, returning is simple, and when it comes to backtracking, it's easier to remember a place when you can connect it to one of the major towns in-game. Let's take a look at a section from the second day of testing this mod. I started off in Riften, so I've got an ass load of portals nearby. A few jumps later, I end up in the Blade's headquarters with some awesome gear and I'm feeling like a million bucks. Some more exploring, some light combat, then I ran into a peculiar issue I wasn't sure how to write into the this video. Uh, nah, this one's gonna be scary. I'm gonna dip my head in real quick though. Not, I'm not here for a while. Okay, and it's all, it's all glitched out. Oh no, God, we're being attacked by floating brooms. Run. I'm out of here. Nope. Take me back to two. Or wait a minute. Now that entrance works? Wait, hold on. Oh my gosh, it feels like I just escaped a nightmare. Wait, what am I doing in here? No, this is a different inn. Okay. So we've got the hallway here. This is the hallway we spawned in at, right? Okay. This is where we spawned in. In my professional opinion, I think that there was a teleport here and a teleport here. Why? I have no fucking clue. I have no idea why. We were too close to either one to activate. Let's just say it was this one. What did I do in the cave? I ran past it and it invalidated and then came back through and caught this one? So my theory is, if we do what we just did, but in reverse, so instead of running towards that ledge where we had the empty chest and all that nonsense, I'm gonna run towards this one and all this nonsense, then run back the other way, and hopefully we can reverse whatever physics took place and find our way home. Much to my surprise, my two invisible doors theory detailed in this astro engineer level sketch was actually right. I spoke with mod creator DDM right after this and he confirmed he accidentally put two doors there. My solution, shit, I went the wrong way again. <laughs> Damn, I did it wrong. Not even close, but hey, I'm trying, all right? When in doubt with this run, just jump into the abyss and you'll teleport at the start of the dungeon. As for how this plays into the whole hub town part of this video when we've seemingly lost connection to Riften. All right, where does the... Entrance take us. Mm. Battleborn, give me your money. Why run? Right. Bullet dodged, another hub town. Make sure you appreciate these guys when they show up on your journey. Cherish them. Keep count of how many jumps away you are from any given town you've encountered, and start methodically clearing them out as best you can. We're gonna go on a brief tour through every single door in Whiterun and try to map some things out. Try to just figure out where we're at. First up, obviously, front gate. We're at the, we're at the Thalmor Embassy. Hey, can we start this quest? Anything main quest related, we're going to mark with a green X. Uh, hello, stranger? How are you? We've got dungeon, nothing, potential main connection point. If it has two doors, we'll, we'll come up with a new system if it has two doors, okay? We'll give it a yellow X here. Just a couple wolves, no big deal. 
and if we encourage the wolves to run into inanimate objects at high speed, they'll take themselves out. Uh, this looks like a developer testing room. <laughs> How did I get in here? Oh god! I just got jump scared by the fucking alchemist! Right next door! <laughs> we found the alchemist! Alright! I mean, this just screams green. It's a dragon priest. That screams green enough for me to mark it. Green with a red mark? Fine. You guys want a red streak in there? I'll give you a red streak. Dark color for the boss. Okay, you're right. There is a boss encounter in there, so I'll throw a little bit of orange on top. Not too much. Ooh, maybe we can even get the whole entire town of Whiterun is going to be tasting the rainbow by the time I'm done here. And I still have a bone to pick with Skittles. They changed lime to apple. Now, this is the actual back door to the alchemist we were just at. This takes us to... Stillborn Cave, right next door to Abortion Alley. What are we, do, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing here? Who named this cave? This strategy had me seeing the real potential of this mod. It's like going on a greatest hits tour with Skyrim across both popular locations and maybe some places you've forgotten about. I mean, did you even know that orc strongholds enact laws on their own and can arrest you if you break the law? Because I didn't until this challenge. It's about landing in a critical quest location at the wrong time and just watching things break. It's about reacting to problems as they're thrown your way. Much like the Elder Scrolls series as a whole, its strength lies in the emergent unscripted storylines you'll create, even though fate will try its best to test your patience and break your heart. <clears throat> yeah, it's like it's like stubbing your toe on an intellectual problem. No, not, not, not like that. I mean like the guard barracks in Whiterun not being randomized on the way in, but on the way out, teleporting you to Meridia's shrine, which closes off your return if you haven't started the quest yet. Uh... So we came to Meridia's a little bit early, and our return passage is now blocked. I mean taking on enemies more powerful than you. What? He teleported behind! No! Illegal! I mean finding yourself in the mountains with no food, no heat, and time counting down for you to make a move. It isn't all heartbreak and stress, however. Through the first two days of testing this mod, I could feel how rewarding it was to properly take advantage of the hand I was dealt. Clearing a house of all its potions and potatoes to later finding myself using those potions or eating those potatoes made me sit back and think, yes, this is fantastic, and I can't wait to see the stories others are able to tell. While the standard gameplay loop is compelling and I saw the potential, it didn't really click for me until the third day when I stopped enforcing permadeath on myself. Rather than trying to rush things just to get a video done and meet contractual obligations, I was able to see what real progress with this playstyle is like. It may be an hour, it may be four hours, it may be ten minutes, but when the moment hits and the light bulb goes off in your head, you'll have an objective and the chase is on. Wait, this is brilliant. Oh no. Oh no, <laughs> oh no, it's locked or stuck in here. Is this run already dead? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Because after 25 minutes of trying to break my way out of the Thalmor Embassy Courtyard, this is the only thing I have resembling a plate, so hopefully we can just run through the gate here. I haven't done this glitch on stream in a really long time. I feel like an angle might work. Should I go into this corner? No! No! No, the book! Wood plate, wood plate. We just need to find a wooden plate, which I think we'll be able to if we go back to the guard barracks. Oh! <gasps> I just gave up. The first non-permadeath run with this mod and the run dies with one location found. By all means, give it a try and let me know if you find a way out of here. Seed number 481516. The next run luckily started right in Riften again, giving us a hub teleport on our tactical belt of teleportation. Uh, I mean, let's just start marking off doors and see what we get. We'll start at the keep. What the hell, where, where am I? Uh, hi, blood worker. <laughs> nice to meet you. All right, let's just get through. Take what we can from him and run back and not survive. But at least we have a sleeping buddy for our dirt nap. Blood Horker. What's up with all the Blood Horkers? Ah, oh, well, that's a fucking joke. Ooh, hold on. Not bad. Bust of the Gray Fox? Am I robbing the Gray Fox right now? Mercer's plans? Holy shit, it is. It's Chilren. <laughs> we found Chilren already. But I remember breaking... What do you think you do? Come on. I thought I thought this was a quest no one could fail. We need to find an inn. Now we need to find a place to sleep. God damn, this place is gorgeous. 
Oh, I feel so intimidated wandering around here. So this should take me back. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why does it do this to me? Damn it. Okay, well, uh, add sleep access, I guess, to our tactical belt and goodbye, Riften. We still need a quest, we need another hub, and some level ups or loot. So we're stuck in Blackreach, but there's a few doors under this floating orange orb. Some crispy servants, a few jumps in a science project later. Oh, centipedes? Oh, they have, oh, they have giant centipedes here. Awesome. Cool. I'm going back the way I came. Fuck this place. What's it called? Still... How How many times are we going to end up in the abortion cave? A few jumps and a private medical decision later, I ended up at Pitch Black here, or at least I thought it was. I know where we're at. I know exactly where we're at. For the uninitiated, when I first started my Without Leaving series on the channel, we paid a visit to Solitude for the second installment of the series. There's a dungeon underneath the church in Solitude, inaccessible by conventional means when region locked just within the city's walls, so we ended up spending almost two hours wall glitching our way in and out of this dungeon. Why do I do this? Why did I start doing this? Why? Why? Why did we have to come down here? Why? Why did I have to find out that this dungeon even existed? I'm slamming my face into a wooden plate! over and over and over for like an hour and a half straight. That's been 90% of this damn stream. Go through the wall! For those of you that have been watching the channel since that video, this is what's called character development. I haven't done this in a long time, but we should be able to, on this wall, if we have our plate horizontally, we should be able to go right through. Yeah, I got the advantage. You were sitting down. You were chilling. You were playing cards. What is that, Euchre? All right, fine. Giant explosion of death. Is that a joke? You guys want to know what a migraine feels like when you're really hungover? This. This is what it feels like. <laughs> Stop it! For sake! Can I get out of the dungeon? I haven't even stolen that much. I've been fairly accommodating. Why do I feel like I just walked into a moonshine operation? Malice is teaching me everything. Huh? He's like, whoa. Huh? The doors here open? We can leave? <laughs> like, they've been in here. They've been me slaves for the last, like, 10 years. Oh, sorry. I really hate to interrupt your guys' work so often. Maybe get a new job, losers. Oh, they locked the door. <laughs> no, they locked me in. <laughs> no. That takes care of that. I just love how every place we travel to is a moist cavern and, you know, always some asshole two feet away from me, ready to just, like, point blank <laughs> shove magic into my brain. So far, so... Oh, where did I last save? I hate this game. I just want to make it clear that I hate this game. <laughs> so you might run into a dungeon or two that gets the best of you. Happens to us all. My best advice is to ignore the impulses you might have to leave it behind, because then you'd be letting a bunch of robed nerds get the best of you. You're not a little baby wee-woo, are you? Once my skull had been f***ed enough times, I lucked out and landed at Dawnstar. You'll want to use the same strategy that I showed you earlier, moving throughout the town, poking your head into each door real quick, and getting a sense of who your interdimensional neighbors are. Oh, that is a gorgeous view. Whew, easy now. Hey, I'm just admiring your fort and a gorgeous part of the map. Uh, you know it's shit. When you start off looking at the swamp door, you know it's done. How many times am I going to end up in this? Why? How many doors are in here? We've been on the bottom. We've been on top. We've been sideways. We've been up and down and all around. I'll take a Falmar Axe, though. I think that's a slight upgrade. Oh, no, you're over encumbered. Shut up. I'm adventuring. Here we go. This is going to be a good one. I'm feeling it. In, in, in. Oh, the Vigilance of Stendar. Do you think they're going to take any issue with me being clearly dressed as one of their adversaries? What do you want? My duty is to guard Brina Merilis. <laughs> I can tell you love your job. <laughs> ah! 
All right, this one is broken. Okay, ground is made of lava. Ground is made of oh, fucking lava. Come on, don't get, don't sit in the chair. Oh, we found an alchemist. You should put that weapon away. Ma'am, I know I'm well endowed, but you don't have to be so forward with me. <laughs> I think you get the point that rolling the dice and letting things happen as they may is the real spirit and fun of this. It can be challenging at times too, which let's be real. After 11 years, playing these games on the harder difficulties or with some form of restriction is the elite and superior way to play. No offense to anyone still enjoying them on easy, that's valid and cool, you're cool too, but uh, I need a little bit more these days, my tolerance, it's pretty high. Like I said before, it's gonna be different for everyone. 10 minutes, two days, an hour. For me, it was about two hours when the moment hit and Dawnstar warped me into what ended up giving me my MacGuffin object for the rest of my journey. Wait, this is brilliant. This is amazing. We might be able to do Shagora's quest. The Pelagius Wing of Solitude's Palace. I won't bother to do the math right now, but finding the one door that takes me to a crucial location for Shagora's quest. Of all people, the Mad God himself? It's fitting, because this mod feels like one giant Shagorath prank. I think this is how the mod may play for most people, collecting locations like the Thalmor Embassy Courtyard and Interior, saving them for later, and then backtracking your way to them when you need them for a specific quest. It sounds non nonsensical and stupid because it is, but that's what makes it fun. The only thing standing between us and scavenger hunt level quest completion is the mad beggar in solitude, who we need to start this quest. Climb on in the boat and get comfortable. I'm tired, I'm famished. Look at how low my health is from freezing my ass off in the boat. <laughs> I'm having a really bad time. We'll use the rock defense. He's gonna have to run into all the rocks and it should kill him. Told ya. There it is. We got hits. Oh, we got a lot of hits on him. Go, Rocky. It's working. The more I set myself on fire, the more powerful I become. This is a really good door to have. If we were thinking main story, we could advance the main story. This would be a good one to take note of. And we're in Windhelm. We're back in main city Windhelm. So we've lost our connection point to the Windhelm docks. We've built a connection point to the main story on the mountain. And now I have the entire city of Windhelm, which is huge, especially after we lost Riften. This looks like solitude or the Thalmor embassy. Thalmor embassy again. How many times am I going to end up at the Thalmor embassy? Damn it. Oh, no. Oh, I, I, I'm definitely not supposed to be here yet. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Pull a little prank or two. Not sure how that missed. I have a couple theories on why that one did. Oh, fuck. We made it to solitude, but not. Were you, you awaiting my arrival or something? Nice home you got here. And then we can escape back through our dimensional portal. Nobody saw that happen. I've been, I, we got here. I don't know how we keep finding main story locations. This place is glitched. I got to get back to the way that I took in here. But naturally, I'm going to run out of stamina while doing it. Ooh, parkour. Got to be it. Got to be it. I want to say I've been down here before. I don't remember the context of it. I think it's at the end of a quest. This is like an escape route. No, 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 not Solitude Castle. I need Solitude Courtyard. What if the answer is right in front of us and it's just the Pelagius wing door? Solitude? Sol Solitude, yes! Ye yes! Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yes! And you know what? Just to bring this whole stupid journey full circle, guess what's in that door? The church. Where everything started, Patema's basement, we glitched through the wall. Think about the journey that took us here, right back to the church. Man, let me tell you, the elation when you connect the dots and retrace your steps properly to achieve a goal with this mod, is almost as awesome as it is terrible to find out that even after completing the next objective of acquiring the Pelagius Wing key, that the instance of the Pelagius Wing that I had access to was the incorrect one. There's actually two versions of the Pelagius Wing. Go figure, one with access to the quest and one without it. But you know what? At the end of the day, I can't be that upset. 
It's Shea Goraz's quest, right? And I can't think of a more fitting conclusion to it. While of course my goal with this video as always was to make you blow air out of your nose at a slightly higher velocity than normal, I'm actually really passionate about the potential for this mod and the playthroughs it might inspire. What if all the chests were randomized too? What if quest objects changed locations? You could use one of the unleveling mods on top of it. Multiplayer. Iron Man. What if there was a scoring system so you'd be given rewards based upon completion of or finding quest items? You could challenge a friend or work together with one or work together with an entire community. Because right now, I'm issuing a challenge to everyone watching this video. Let's work together and find a viable path to beat Skyrim using the World Randomizer. The seed we'll be using is 111122. Starfield's original release date. I have a channel on my Discord server right now dedicated to tracking teleport locations if you want to get involved and contribute. I've linked my server below as well as a Google document with more information. This is only the beginning of the Skyrim World Randomizer, which is live right now on the Skyrim Nexus so you can begin your journey through time and space. Please, if you can, at least give the mod an endorsement. I know DDM worked incredibly hard on this and had to individually grab every door by hand in order to get it to work. If you do give it a try, thank you. There's still work that needs to be done, of course, like getting DLC locations added in, getting an Xbox port of this mod ready for launch, but DDM, he deserves a bit of a break for now. I just know that he'd love to see others enjoy his work as much as I have. Now get out there, download the mod, and start helping me find Bleak Falls Barrel, you beautiful sons of bitches.